Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we're going to explore another of the experimental features on WASP and this experimental feature is graph grammar aggregations. So if all the examples that we've seen in the previous tutorials rely on the fact that WASP uh, get, given the input that you provide, so the rules, the parts, and for example a field, the WASP internal algorithm will just try to find the best rules and the best uh, combination of rules, parts, and connections in order to create an aggregation that follow the geometry. Or in the case of a stochastic aggregation, we'll just uh, randomly choose those rules and uh, connections. Uh, what we are doing instead with graph grammar aggregation is that graph grammar aggregations are an aggregation uh, methodology that puts you directly in control of how parts are aggregated and not just at the global level but also at the individual level of how each part is placed. And the way in which this works is that when we are writing rules we are not only writing rules connecting parts and just placing them but we also assign a unique ID to each part and using this ID we are then able to say in the next step take the second part and apply this part over that second part and then when we go to one step further we can say okay now go back to the first part pick the second connection and add, add a new part there so we're gonna see how we can use this uh, methodology to start from a set of basic parts and then assemble them together to create more complex parts and then go back to conventional WASP aggregation methodologies to then uh, create, for example, a stochastic aggregation. So you'll see how you can start from very basic parts and build more complex parts by controlling exactly where each part is placed. Let's get started. If you go uh, on in the description and download the uh, Rhino file as well as the Grasshopper work file, you will find inside it an already set up simple aggregation which contains uh, two types of parts which we used before. And the first part has three connections which they are assigned according to this um, sequence, so you can see it there. And the second part has two connections which have this order. Now you'll also notice that we are using the WASP advanced part and that's actually needed because of a little bug in the graph grammar aggregation. It shouldn't be needed, but for now it is. So it's going to be fixed soon, but for now we have to use that. And you can also see that we also store the actual original BRAP inside the part in order to be able to retrieve it further and avoid displaying the mesh. So what we want to do is we want to use these two parts and we want to build an aggregation where we are not anymore uh, controlling like letting an algorithm grow this aggregation, but we want to really decide that we are going to grow this aggregation in a certain way. So to do that, we are going to go to the experimental tab and get a WASP graph grammar aggregation, which we're going to bring in. And then we're going to connect our parts to the part tab. And now you see that this is a much simpler algorithm because it doesn't really have any input. Besides, we can apply some previous aggregated parts, even though that might not work, we would have to check that. And, and then the rules. And now what's really important is that in this case the rules are slightly different. So if with WASP we were specifying rules as the possibility for connection, in this case we are writing rules that define exactly a connection operation, so place this type of part over this other part at this specific connection. And besides that, we also want to assign a unique ID to each of the parts placed in order to retrieve them further. So what we're going to do is we're going to write those rules in a panel. So we're going to create a panel, right click on it and uncheck multi-line data. And so what we want to do is, for example, we're going to say that the first rule that I'm going to be performing is I'm going to take the exa part, so the hexagonal on connection 0 and I'm going to connect it to a cube on connection 1 let's say. So till now this looks like a normal rule but now the new part that comes with graph grammar aggregation is then then we add the symbol which is major of and what we are saying is that the exa part will now be called A and then we create an underscore and the Q part will now be called B. If now we connect this rule into rules, the aggregation is performed. 
we want we can go and get a uh, get part geometry to see what we are doing and you see that we are doing nothing and that's because the aggregation needs to be reset first so we create the button and if now we press it we see that we took an X apart and we placed that connection so you see there's a difference if wasp if in wasp with uh, like say a stochastic aggregation or field driven aggregation rules are just possibilities in this case we are really specifying uh, an exact uh, placement operation and not only that but now the hexagonal part has been given an ID and this ID is A and the cube part has been given an ID and this ID is B so what it means now is that I can write a second rule and instead of writing X up I'm gonna write A telling to the algorithm to pick the A uh, part and then I'm gonna say that I wanna use, for example, the connection one, which I know, which I can see here is free. And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add another hexagon, for example, on connection two. And now again, I'm gonna write the second part, and the ID is, is I know that the first ID stays A, and the second ID is gonna be, for example, C. And now you see that what we've done is we added another part over that. I can continue doing that and now for example I can decide that I want to grow something on top of my cube so now I'm gonna type B and I know that connection 1 has been already used so I'm gonna type B0 and I'm gonna for example add an hexagon hexa for example 0 and then again the cube stays B as ID and then I'm gonna create a second ID which is D. Now the IDs can be anything, can be any name, I'm just using um, letters because it's easier to keep track. But now you see that in this way I've been creating an aggregation in which all those parts are placed in a specific way. I'm gonna let's say write a fourth rule which is growing for example from D now something important that you have to notice is that if I write for example D0 which is a connection that I already used and then I'm gonna say add uh, for example cube 1 and then I'm gonna say D and then E that's gonna be performed and I'm gonna be placing the cube on top of itself so we have to be careful because of course since you have full control within uh, a graph grammar aggregation any check for collisions and overlappings of parts is the it's disabled and so it's up to you to be careful and make sure that you're not overlapping things so in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna for example change d0 to d1 and now my cube is gonna be added there when you do changes in the rules you always it's always a good thing to reset as I said this component is very experimental so it's kind of buggy so just always reset and that's gonna make it uh, a bit easier now that we have done this what we can actually do is we can take this group of parts and join them together to create a larger part which is composed of this uh, basic parts and to do that what we're gonna do is we are gonna um, go to parts and get the construct part Instead of using the geometry for a join, I'm gonna actually use my uh, my attribute. So I'm gonna go to elements, deconstruct attribute because I have just one attribute for now. And so here I'm gonna be extracting my uh, original BREPs so I can hide my part geometry here. Here I have my BREPs and then I can do a solid union. Right click button here so that I'm doing it and here we go here I created my part geometry and so I want to for example create a new part out of this and in this case it can just be a basic part so I'm gonna bring in a basic part I'm gonna give it a name and in this case it's gonna just be p1 because maybe I'm gonna create a second one my geometry is gonna be the geometry I created uh, and then for the connections what we can actually do is we can go and deconstruct the connections that we had available here and then create new connections out of them 
So what we can do is, you see that connections are organized in a data tree. So we have five branches, one for each part, and in each branch we have a few connections. So what we can do is we can right click and simplify this so that we have just one number representing the different branches and then we can use a second number to pick items. So we can use a component called tree item where we're gonna for example get our tree and then we can choose from which part we want to get the connection. So for example let's say part 0 and then we can we can say from which which connection we want to use from that. And so in this case I'm gonna get connection number 2. If you want to make sure that we are doing something that makes sense, we can go to deconstruct connection. And so you see that now I see that I picked the connection that sits there. I'm going to just copy this now. And for example, pick part number two. Again, connect to this one to see what I'm selecting. And now part number two is there, so maybe I want to pick part one. So now that's going to be my connection. And then I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to for example get part number four. Again check. And connection zero. So for example I can pick these three connections just for you to see them. And use these three connections and merge them into one component. and simply connect them to the connections and now I created a part which is composed from built out of those smaller parts and I can just start aggregating them very easily what I can also do is I can also create an attribute which will store the uh, original geometry so I can create it up here so I'm going to connect my geometry here, I'm going to call it geo. So then I'm going to store the original BREP instead of the mesh. And lastly I'm going to create a toggle to say that the value has to be transformed. I'm going to connect these two attributes. And now I have my part. And then it's just doing things with a part in the same way as we normally do it in WASP. So what we can do is we can go to aggregation, create a stochastic aggregation plug my part, get a rule generator to create rules, say that I want 120 parts, and then create a reset button. And so now I can go and get attribute my name and extract my geo attribute. And so we see how we are, very, we are very quickly creating an aggregation composed of very complex parts, but these parts are nothing else than composed of those basic parts. And the way in which we organize these basic parts is we have done it by accurately controlling how to place each element. So what we can also do is now, since we did this using this set of components, so anything after this merge, we can just get all this stuff group it and then we can just copy paste it low and if we hide for a second all this stuff we could go down here preview again our parts and start writing uh, another set of rules to create a new aggregation that we can use as a base so for example I'm gonna just delete everything and I'm gonna this time start from a cube and I'm going to pick connection 0 on the cube and I'm going to add let's say an hexagon on connection 1 and again I'm going to call them a just for you to understand I could also just call them Bob and John and then what I could do in the next element is I could say so for example if I visit, if I visit now and I shouldn't leave an empty line so here you go, that gets created and now in the next step I can actually say Bob 1 connects to let's say Hexa 2 
zero. And then the naming is going to stay the same for the first, so it's going to be Bob, and the other one is going to be called Mike, for example. So now you see what happens here is I'm already creating another part. And for example, I could just keep it as it is. So this is just three parts. And now I could just go here and say that I'm going to want on part one. Yeah, I'm going to have connection zero. On part two, I'm going to have connection one. And part two, I'm going to actually have connection two, for example. So if I visualize it here, now you see that I built a part with three connections. And I'm going to change its name to, for example, P2. And now what I can do is I can take my stochastic aggregation and instead of just using one part, I can create a merge. And then connect this both to the part aggregation and to the rule generator. And I can also, for example, impose with a toggle that um, one part is not allowed to connect to itself. So if now we go and reset and see the preview, we see that we created a very complex aggregation. And if we want to see a little bit better what we are creating, we can separate the part types. So we go to get part by name, sorry, get part by name. And I'm going to separate from one side P1 and then connect it to my get attribute. And for example, also create a custom preview for it. And then just copy this old block and here change this to P2. Maybe change the color a little. And here we go. So you see that now we are creating this aggregation made of this uh, composite parts. And the way in which we can control how these parts are made is entirely controlled by the way we write those rules here. So if now, for example, I would want to grow that uh, a bit more, I could, for example, say that I'm going to take uh, John, which was the first hexagon we placed on connection, let's say zero. And I'm going to add another cube. Uh, on connection zero, for example, and then I'm going to call them John, it is the same, and Tyler. I'm just making names up. So now you see that if I reset this aggregation and then I reset my global aggregation, now my parts include those that cube as well. So you can see that uh, through stochastic aggregation, you have the possible through sorry to graph grammar aggregation you have the possibility of adding a pretty high level of control to your aggregation so you can also imagine ways in which you would use for example a python script or some internal logic to generate this very long list of rules and instead of having an algorithm compute an aggregation for you be you yourself that decide at every step where each part has to be placed so this opens up a lot of possibilities for really customizing uh, the way an aggregation is built and the way an aggregation looks. And in future releases of WASP, this part will be highly expanded and we really look at how you can automate the process of generating these uh, aggregation sequences. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This was a little bit nerdier than some of the other tutorials we have seen more recently, but it's one of the first steps towards having a much higher control over aggregations instead of letting everything to be done by WASP algorithms. If you have any question, as always, just write in the comments or in the Discord chat and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.